Hello. So today I'm going to show you how to make some of the fork tine rings where I cut out um, a shape from the base of the fork here and then use the tine to turn it and form the ring. And I use the flat wearable 3D bender um, to do that. I'll show you that when we get to that part. But these are some of the other rings that I've done. This one's acorn, flower, and the sacred heart. Hope you can get that. Um, so today I'm gonna work on a clover. And what I do when I do these is I have a Cricut machine. You don't have to use that, but I have it. And I found it to be very helpful. So what I do is I go on there and I print out in different sizes, whatever pattern it is that I wanna use that day. Um, you can see probably better on this one because I've actually removed it from there. But there are others cut on this one as well. Um, and then I just take it, peel it off, it's vinyl, and it's sticky on the back. So I peel it off and I place it onto my fork. Um, so what you'll be using is this tine so not the end one, but one over. Um, and the stem on this one is gonna go into that. And that's gonna be our ring. Um, I also use the Cricut for any kind of pattern that I'm gonna be sawing out. I find it nice to use because it, it does stick so well. And then it also comes off nicely when you're ready to peel it off. So this is another um, necklace. I still have to file it and clean it up, but this is one that I was working on before. Um, so, what I'm going to do is use this bench pen, um, which happens to be, it's lined with leather um, to protect whatever you put in there. But it's, because I do these fork rings fairly often, it's actually a little bit worn. And right now, the only thing it will hold effectively is one of these fork tines. Uh, pieces or fork heads because it's um, it's in there nice and tight but if I put in a piece of flat metal right now this is not very effective I was going to change it out and then I realized I'm going to do some more rings so there's no point in changing that out right now so when you are sawing um, this is my saw it's a haymaker um, they all I guess the blades go in a little bit differently but I'm going to show you and take this one out and show you that how mine works. So um, I do have this handy organizer. Um, it's made by Kerf, and it has a it has markings for the different blades. They're different blades, and it also tells you what gauge metal to use them on. I don't really follow that but it's handy to know what you should be using it on. Um, so the way this works is there's a, a hole in the top and you dial that to the corresponding blade that you wanna get out and then you can dump out the blades. Put it back in, turn it back to closed and then nothing will fall out. So it's kinda handy. Um, when you get a blade out, because I already have one that's still good, you need to look really close, and I don't think my camera's gonna catch this, but the blades go in one direction, um, and you want that to be down. So one side is gonna be smooth, the other side, and mine actually has beeswax all over it, so even if you might have been able to see it, you're probably not gonna be able to see it. Um, the other thing you can do is, is drag your finger up it, and you'll feel resistance against the, the um, blades when you're going up if, if the blades are heading down. Hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so you want the blades, you want the, the edge of the blades to be going down if you're holding it that way. And you're gonna put it you're gonna put it in between one end. It doesn't really matter if you do the top or the bottom, but you're gonna put it 
guys need to see that part. You're gonna put it in there, you're gonna tighten, and you want it to be all the way down against the bottom. And tighten. And then the top one, you're gonna slide. How do I do this for you? The top one, you're gonna slide between the two pieces of metal. Nope. Between the two pieces of metal. And then you're gonna push against something so that you can, can you see that? I don't think you can. So then you're gonna push against something until you have a little bend in it so you know it's all the way touching the top and then tighten it. And then when you go like this, you should hear a high pitch noise and that means they've got it good and tight. If there's too much slack in here, you, it's not gonna cut well and you're gonna wind up breaking a blade. Then I use beeswax to coat my blade and then you're ready to start sawing. Okay, so you want to be in a good position when you start to saw. Like right now, if I were to hold my saw, and I, it would be really uncomfortable to saw at this height. Um, I'd be holding my shoulder in an unnatural position and I'd wind up with lots of aches and pains. So what you want to do is get a chair that you can sit on, that you can raise the height or lower the height or, or adjust just whatever you need to, if you need to adjust the height of uh, your item, if you're using something mobile um, to attach your vise to, you can adjust the height of your item. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna sit, um, even this is a little too low for me, because I wanna sit so that my elbow, my shoulder's relaxed and my elbow is at my side and my blade is going to be about middle of the item I'm working on. So I'm going to raise my chair a little more. Try again. Okay. So this might be a little bit high. It might go down just a tiny bit. No, nope, too much. <laughs> I know it sounds like I'm being really fussy, but it's if you're going to be sawing for a while, it's going to make more of a difference because it's you, if you're more comfortable and you're able to relax your shoulder, you're going to break less blades. You're going to fatigue your arm less, um, and you'll be able to work longer uh, and more comfortably. So here we go. I'm going to just start. Well, the other thing you should do really is I should move over. Um, because this is being held by the vise, I tend to move around my piece a bit more than most people that are sawing. Um, generally, you move your, your work instead of your body, but I don't always do that. So here we go. You want, when you're first starting, you can do a couple of short strokes, but you really want to do long strokes and let the saw do the work. You don't want to push too hard. And when you're sawing, you want to stay on the outside edge. Okay, so I'm going to create the dividers for the leaves, and I'm going to just drag my saw across the top, just where I want the mark.
And this is where I usually wind up giving myself a manicure with a saw when I'm doing this kind of detail work. These are my escape mess files. I'm making a mess. But these are these are smaller and finer. And these are good. Love them. Um, so I'll put those out so I have something to choose from. And this one is kind of a triangle. There you go. Kind of a triangle, so it has flat sides. This one is kind of a little bit rounded on both sides. Um, this one's more flat on both sides. Uh, and you'll find that they all have, they all come in handy in different spots when you're trying to file. My favorite one that I use a lot is flat on one side and rounded or domed on the other side. And that looks like this. But as I said, they all come in handy for different spots when you're working on it. So, zoom it over you. No. Why you keep moving? Okay, so I wanna smooth out the edges. And I actually kinda of wanna smooth the bumps a little bit. But I'm also gonna to want to dome the top of these. So I'm gonna want those to be. So files only work in one direction. So if I pull it back, it's not doing anything. So you have to push forward to remove the material. I'm just creating a little bit of detail for my stem. And then on this side, So this part is slow, and you put in as much detail as you want, as much or as little. It kind of makes the metal look cool when you file it, too. I like it. I'm going to figure 
out how to get in there to do that bit. I might have to go back to this guy. I don't know why I have it in my head that I want it to be that way, but I do. Of course, it's like an impossible angle. I should have thought about that before I drew it. You need to be able to get at it to do it. A little more polishing and I'm calling that one done. Okay so I polished that up. Use a little bit of the red rouge that Suzanne sells and um, I think it came out pretty good. Reflections. I don't know if the camera is focusing. I think it came out pretty nice. And that's it.